In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to capture wedding reception details. Let's go. All right guys, welcome back to another video. This is a live wedding that we're at right now. And as you can see, this place is decorated really, really nicely. You guys are gonna step behind the scenes with me and we're gonna to learn today how to cover wedding reception details. We're gonna capture things like the centerpieces, the tabletops, the decorations, the lighting, the flowers, everything. I'm gonna give it to you guys in portions and I'm also gonna share with you the camera settings that I used to take these pictures. All right guys, so when you're taking pictures of the reception details, you need to keep in mind that you need to separate into different groups. Group one being one whole table shot, focus on the details and the items on that table. Group two will be a wide shot of the whole place. After you get that wide shot, then you're gonna focus on the sweetheart table. And after you focus on the sweetheart table, you're gonna get the cake and you're gonna get any other details such as a dessert table, a signing station, a memory station, and things like that. So I have a process to this. I have a two-step process. When I first get to the venue and everything is pretty much set up, I capture some pictures. These are called my safe shots. The reason I say that they're safe shots is because if I'm by myself and they don't have a second photographer, I'm capturing these details now before everything starts. So in the event that while I'm taking portraits and cocktail hour is happening and I'm gonna miss that timing that I need to get these detail shots during cocktail hour and I can't do it, then I have those safe shots. Now. Afterwards, if you do happen to have the time to capture these details right before introductions begin, you have a secondary set of photos that you can use and those will be the preferred photos to use. Because now you have your candles on and everything is finalized the way it should look like the bride and the decorators intended to. So when it's time to start the details, we're gonna start off with the tabletop shots. You're gonna use available light. And the reason I say that is because candles will be on. And if they're not, that's totally fine. But most of my shoots, whenever I'm working a wedding, I'm always using available light. So to start off the details, you pretty much want to go with things that you see with the naked eye, right? When you walk into a venue, you're shocked. You have to think like a guest, you have to think like the bride. You're shocked, you're like, oh my God, this is all beautiful, this looks great. You have to put that into a photographer's perspective. You have to get close-ups, detail shots, macro shots, wide shots of all the details that people are enjoying. People pay a lot of money for this. They want to have pictures that they can look back at and enjoy of the details that were there because they miss those details. When they walk in, they're all about the party. The bride and groom are literally in tunnel vision. They don't remember these things. So your job is to capture these things so that way they can look at it back in time. Also, these are great detail shots that you can use to build your story. I'm a documentary photographer and I love the story. So in your case, if you're trying to develop a story, you wanna make sure that you capture all of the details around you at the reception. So just to point out a few items here, the first thing that we're gonna start off with is with the table setting. We wanna focus on certain sections of it, like the napkin with the gold piece here, some of the cutlery. So we'll get some overhead shots of that and just Use a good angle. Nothing needs to be center or straight on. What I'm using right now is a 90 millimeter so I can get really close in case I wanna focus on little details such as these. And while you're working, you're just walking around the table and you're getting different details. Use different creative angles. For example, if you wanna get a shot of this plate right here, use the glass to your advantage, you shoot through it. Let's say you wanna do the same thing with the table sign, the number two. You shoot through the glass. Always make sure to put back the things you touch. And you have to remember too, people use these to eat. So be a little sanitary, wash your hands beforehand and also make sure never to touch the top because that's where people are putting their lips. So as you're walking around, uh, the next piece I wanna take a picture of is the centerpiece, the floral design here. So this is exactly how I do it. You make sure you get two versions of it, portrait and landscape. And then I'm gonna focus on the centerpiece itself and the rest of the room or somewhat of the room in focus. And this is what that looks like.
All right, so next up, we're gonna work on the wide shots, the room shots. This is gonna be the tricky part, especially if you're doing it right before introductions. You still have catering staff, walking around, filling up glasses of water. You have the DJ setting up, you have different people setting up at this time. So make sure that you communicate with the decorator or the venue manager, so that way they understand that you need to get a really, really quick wide shot. Shouldn't take you no more than two minutes or three minutes at most, you get the shot and then you're done with it. So for the wide shot, we break it up into different parts. We're gonna do a general shot of each section of the place, north, south, west, and east, right? Or you can choose a corner too. We're gonna to move on to the next side. So we're gonna go out to the north side of it. And in this case, we're gonna face the sweetheart table and we're gonna get a wide shot of that. Once you get your wide shot of the sweetheart table, you're gonna get a little closer so that way you can see more details. And as you guys can see, you have the sweetheart table and you have the cake right beside it. We'll worry about the cake next. From the center of the dance floor, you're also gonna make sure you get detail shots too. So you shoot to one side, one corner, do the same thing on the opposite side. Things may change while you're shooting. You might have catering staff on that side, while you're focusing on this side and vice versa. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're working with a videographer, usually that videographer is with you. So once you're done with one section, that person is then covering that section as well and so on and so forth. So while you're shooting the sweetheart table, you need to keep in mind that there are certain details that have changed from the sweetheart table to the guest tables. Sometimes there's more decorations, more florals that you need to pay attention to. One key factor that a lot of people miss is sometimes the bride and groom glass has their names etched on it, or maybe the word bride or groom etched on it as well. So that's just a key detail that you might want to focus on whenever you're covering the sweetheart table. All right, so we're getting into the wedding cake part now. This is one of my favorite parts, because not only do we get to photograph it, but we potentially could eat some of it later throughout the night. So for the cake shots, I try my best to get some really, really nice pictures for two reasons. One, the baker is going to love you. You can network with the baker and get some pictures for them that they can use for their portfolio, and they will love you for that, and you can potentially get more business with that. We can also get these pictures, along with all the other pictures you took of the reception details, and share it not only with the wedding coordinator, but also with the wedding venue. Again, networking 101. Another video on that pretty soon. But let's go back to the cake. So I am gonna use off-camera flash for this, because what I want to do is I wanna separate the cake from the rest of the backdrop. This is where I mentioned business insurance. Super important. If you don't have business insurance, check out the link I have below. It gives you some information as to wedding insurance uh, because what happens if this right here falls on top of the cake? What happens if your light stand falls and hurts someone? These are things that you should really think about. But anyways, back to the cake. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this lighting, we're gonna get it close to the cake, so that way it lights it up very softly. All right guys, so let's talk about the camera settings to capture the cake. We're gonna lower down our shutter speed down to one over 100. And the aperture, which helps control the light power, is gonna stay somewhere around 2.8. So let's give that a shot. We're gonna come around this way here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off my trigger and I'm gonna lower that down to about ISO 125, shutter speed one over 100 and F2.8. I'm gonna turn my trigger back on for that flash. There you go. So we're gonna get a little closer there just to show some details and hide that section. I don't wanna see that, so I'm gonna crop it in live. Focus on the cake, get a little closer. That's a nice photo right there. Well lit, you have that yellow light right on top of it. If you don't want it to be too distracting, you can move the placement of the camera. Maybe you can hide it. Maybe you could set it somewhere else. Now let's get a little bit more creative here. I'm gonna get a little closer to the cake, shoot it at a taller angle, and take advantage of this here. If this candle was on, then we could use that to our advantage and you're gonna see this in the photo as like a little bokeh ball, right? So you go ahead, now let's do it from the other side. This time we have the candle holder, which is gold. It's gonna create a nice effect. And we're gonna focus on the cake. The light is already where it needs to be. I just want this nice soft light 
coming from this side of the cake. Nice. And an overhead shot. I always get a close up, a wide shot, and an overhead of the cake. So now we're going to focus on additional stations around the venue. In this case, it's going to be our dessert station. We don't have any desserts here. They're not here yet. Baker's running a little late. That's all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine there were donuts. Mm, donuts. And cupcakes and all that good stuff here. Again, going back to the cake, we were getting creative angles, creative shots. And that's what you would do. You would kind of aim your camera focus on whatever dessert was here and use a, a, a shallow depth of field so that way the rest of the donuts or the rest of the cupcakes can look a little blurry. The same thing, move it here this way. All right, so we broke it all up into sections. We have the tabletop details, we have the centerpieces. I showed you the florals, the cake, the sweetheart table, extra stations such as the dessert table, memory table, or card and gift table. So let's talk about settings a little bit. Choice of lens for me, at least, would be 50 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and a 90 millimeter. The 24 millimeter is gonna get general table shots, the room, and all of the other corners and sides. The 50 and the 90 are used to create nice pictures of the details with some bokeh because the compression just makes them look even better. That's why I use a 90 millimeter. Try it out, try different lenses out, try different settings out, see what works for you. So for detail shots, just remember, try your best to do it a little bit quickly, just because you have other vendors that need to also set up for the wedding, or you have the catering staff that need to do their job as well. Everybody has to do a job, you have to be a team player and make sure that everybody is working together to make the couple happy. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about the outside, the ceremony. I'm just joking with you guys, that's another video. Guys, I absolutely love the color selection that the designer and the bride selected for the wedding details today. You're gonna be seeing two more videos that I have for you guys for wedding photographers coming up right on your screen right now, the wedding must-haves part one and part two, and what I carry in my wedding case part one. Go check it out on your screen right now, subscribe for more. <laughs>